Hey there, my name is Arsene Okunja, and I'm going to be talking today about improving your Lighthouse score with Party Town and Gatsby. So a little bit about me, I'm a developer advocate at Builder. In case you're not familiar with what we do, we provide a low-code, no-code tool for visually building websites very quickly using our drag-and-drop editor. And what sets us apart uh, from a lot of competitors is that you can integrate any custom React component you want from any third-party library or anything that you've written. Makes it super easy to build websites, whether you're a technical or non-technical member on your team, uh, without any kind of restrictions. And we spend a lot of time investing in open source, making products like uh, Party Town, which I'm about to talk about. So before becoming a developer advocate, as a full stack engineer, bunch of different roles, mostly with e-commerce and uh, consumer facing product companies. And that means that I've been really, really concerned about uh, website performance for a long time. Which leads me into my next point, which is that as front end developers, full stacks, oftentimes I think we, we kind of think like, ah, JavaScript performance, you know, it's important, but like there's so many things that we can do to optimize it that surely it's not that big a deal. Well, what I would argue is that we actually have a lot of ways to optimize JavaScript delivery. And I think there's an important difference. So if you look into our bag of tricks that we usually reach into for JavaScript performance, we've got minification, we've got compression, we've got code splitting, we've got multiplexing, we've got defer, we've got async on our script tags. And these are all great, all right? Uh, and frankly, there's probably even more <laughs> techniques, you know, but um, the problem with all these te techniques is that they all address uh, getting JavaScript to downloaded to the browser as quickly as possible. But once they're in the browser, JavaScript is still slow. It still has to execute, it has to be parsed, it has to be compiled, um, and JavaScript itself is still a bottleneck. This chart I took from Web Almanac 2020 published by HTTP Archive. By the way, great study if you're really into data around, uh, heavy data around performance on websites. And you know, to summarize the st statistics, you're basically looking at different coefficients of correlation uh, between the size of JavaScript bu uh, bundles uh, in bytes on the one hand and important performance metrics on the other, such as Lighthouse performance score and total blocking time. And you know, the summary is basically these, these two sets of things are highly correlated, right? So the larger that your, uh, larger your uh, JavaScript bundles are, it's going to have a strong uh, impact on, on performance. Now, that's not too surprising, but what's interesting to me is that this finding holds not only for first party, not only for third party JavaScript, but also for async JavaScript, right? Script tags that have async in them, uh, in the tag. And to me, that was kind of a mind blowing uh, revelation. And it just goes to show you that, you know, optimizing how your JavaScript loads, uh, it's an important part of the story, but it's not going to save you. You have to think about optimizing how JavaScript executes if you're really serious about website performance. The problem is that optimizing execution is really hard, right? So this is where Party Town comes into play. Party Town is an open source JavaScript library for executing third party scripts from a web worker. The idea is that it frees up your main JavaScript thread for your first party JavaScript. And it literally just takes a few lines of code to implement. It's, it's like the closest thing to magic that I've seen in a long time in, in uh, front end development. And here's a link to the project and uh, how you can get started with installing it if you're adventurous. I think that this chart just cuts to the heart of the matter. Um, on the left is how you normally uh, load jo JavaScript, right? You've got your first party script, your code, and then you've got your third party scripts. They're all just scripts in the head tag or in body or something like that. The problem is, as you know, because JavaScript is a single threaded language, all this code is fighting amongst itself for that thread. With Party Town, we offload the third party scripts into a worker thread, so it runs in the background, and that's what allows your main thread to execute your first party code and allows for really great performance, uh, really great metrics around time to interactive or first content will paint, all that good stuff. Some features of Party Town. We've got an easy to use API. It's literally just a matter of adding a script tag and then tweaking the type on your third party script tags from text JavaScript to text slash Party Town. Full browser API access within the worker thread for your third party scripts. This is kind of insane. 
I'm just going to say, because a worker thread doesn't even have access to the DOM normally. So like, this is some magic, right, going on. There's, um, okay, so part of town is totally opt-in, meaning that if you install it on your website, it's not going to force all of your third-party scripts to go through party town, right? You're always in control and it's lazy loaded for optimum performance. So that's really great. Um, here's the last point that's really technical and kind of nuanced, but I think it's really important. Scripts that access, third-party scripts that access the browser DOM when they're being run through party town, they access that DOM synchronously, even though they're executed in a background thread. What does this mean? Well, let's take this really simple uh, snippet of code. If you were to just run this in the main thread, like in JavaScript console, you're gonna get a rectangle from the element and it's gonna print the XY coordinates, easy peasy. Here's the problem though. First of all, as we mentioned, in a worker thread, worker thread doesn't have access to the DOM. So you're gonna to have to create some way for the worker thread to communicate with the main thread. Main thread's gonna to have to access the DOM on behalf of your worker thread, serialize the data, communicate it back to the worker thread, and then you're gonna to have to do something with it. This is already a miracle of engineering. Party Town does this for you. But what's even more fundamental is that the connection between, the communication between the worker thread and the main thread is always asynchronous. It has to be. That's just part of the, the browser model. So when you run code without Party Town, web work, inside of a web worker, not only it can't access the DOM directly, but the communication is going to be async. So this console.log statement, there's no guarantee that it's going to run uh, after the rectangle has been acquired. With Party Town, the DOM is accessed synchronously. And this is done through the magic of, uh, of it's not magic, it's, it's just simply using uh, uh, JavaScript proxies and service workers and synchronous XHR requests uh, in a very clever fashion. The result is that third-party scripts that rely on this kind of synchronous execution, they just work and you don't have to think about it. So let's dive really quick into a demo of what this looks like. I created this demo using Shopify Starter and deployed it to Gatsby Cloud. Um, this slide is a quick overview. Feel free to pause the video to go over this, especially if you're going through the code. I'm gonna just skip it in the interest of time, but this is an overview of how I created the, de the demo, the kind of logic behind it. And here are some links uh, to the live demo and a code sample at the end uh, hosted on GitHub. So with that, uh, let me just show you real quick, what does this demo look like? This is running on my local host here. Um, this is literally the Gatsby Shopify demo store. I created a demo uh, Shopify store, added three products. And then I added this uh, video. This is a demo video provided by Wistia. It's a video player with analytics. And let's see if we could play. Okay, you can see that the video works, great. Um, the reason I added that to that page, by the way, is so that it could simulate some of the stress in terms of content loading and execution on, on a page when we run uh, Lighthouse. So to dive into the code really fast, um, we are loading our third-party snippets in Gatsby in this demo through uh, uh, Gatsby SSR.js. If you're not familiar with this file, this is how you access Gatsby's SSR server-side rendering API. Uh, you can find, uh, learn all about it in Gatsby's docs. Three of our third-party tags, Google Tag Manager, Intercom, and the Metapixel, these are being loaded through the snippets that were provided by the vendors. Uh, pretty straightforward. And then two are uh, using uh, the Wistia and Clavio. Clavio is an email marketing tool. Um, these are just using external URLs, right? Uh, and we have this little, this detail here where the type is being set to text party town if we're using, if we say that we're using party town, right? And this is going to allow the party town script to do a query all on all elements that have using this a selector a type selector and it's going to find all the scripts that have text party town and that's how it knows what knows what to load the actual party town itself is being loaded down here um, we are using this party town react component which comes imported from builder.io party town react you don't have to use react to use party town it, it's just a convenience um, so the two most important configuration props here are resolve URL and forward. And these are used for proxying uh, HTTP requests that uh, have special needs around uh, cores, headers, and uh, for proxying, the, the forward prop is used for proxying 
calls to uh, global methods that are set by third party scripts. Uh, I'm not going to go too in depth into it, but there's a bunch of documentation around this at the Party Town uh, site. And for some of the most common scripts, such as Metapixel or Google Tag Manager, Clavio, that kind of stuff, we actually have we have all the settings in the docs. So it's really easy. Like you don't have to figure this out on your own. We've already figured it out, and you just got to copy and paste the the settings in here into the props. Um, and then finally, line 143 here set head components. This is the thing that actually injects the tags into our Gatsby head. So let's see what this looks like. If we load up Google PageSpeed Insights, and then we're going to uh, hit analyze over here. This is the URL of my uh, demo, Gatsby demo that's hosted on Gatsby Cloud. And when I click analyze, this is actually going to get the version of the page that is not using Party Town, right? Um, it's just at this base root path. And it's going to show us the, the Lighthouse score for mobile. And you can see that it's 41. This is like, this is not great. There's a lot of room for improvement. I also want to draw your attention in particular to the total blocking time, 1,260 milliseconds. This is important because total blocking time is the amount of time spent blocking the main thread by long tasks executed between the largest contentful paint and time to interactive. This is not a metric that involves at all the time take that, that's required to load uh, the, to, to download the JavaScript, right? This is a pure execution metric. Um, if we now go to page in speed insights and we're gonna now hit analyze with this forward slash party town on the same uh, base URL. This is now gonna run the lighthouse analysis on this version of the site using Party Town to load everything. And I think you're going to be shocked. And it's running and boom, we're at 90 performance. With what? Just one change. We just added this script. By the way, when I write when I run this, oftentimes I get like 95, 99, like, but I don't think I've ever gotten anything below 90, right? Uh, and it's because it's because Party Town is executing these third party scripts in the background. So they're not blocking the main thread anymore. And you can see that reflected in the total blocking time going down to 320 milliseconds, right? So this is a little bit about, um, you know, this is just a really quick demo about how much uh, even like low hanging fruit, if you just run, if you just add Party Town really quickly um, and just plop all of your third party scripts in, how, how much your web performance can improve. And um, I just wanna say, uh, that ever since I started working with Party Town, it's really got me thinking about uh, web workers in general. So I don't know about you, but to me, like web workers kind of feel like they felt like this mystery and a little bit intimidating to start with. Um, I think Party Town is great because it makes that technology of using JavaScript in a background thread, thread super accessible, right? Um, so something that I've been wondering is like, are more projects just going to switch to their JavaScript running inside of web workers by default, especially now that web workers are so common in all the major browsers? Um, and I'm kind of curious, what do you think? Do you think this is gonna happen and do you want to see more projects using web workers? So um, let me know. Uh, my Twitter is at DesertDevAshSin. Uh, you can find me on GitHub. Also, please, please, please uh, check out our Builder open source Discord. I've got a link over here. Um, you know, we'd love to hear from the community and I've got a link to the Party Town docs if you're interested in trying out Party Town. One last thing that I'll show you before I go. This is great. So here is our GitHub for Party Town. Um, this is totally community driven. Like we're not just doing a code dump of something we developed internally for ourselves and then we don't care or anything like that. I'll prove it to you. Go to pull requests. We've, we haven't been public with Party Town source code that long. It's still in beta, right? So not everything works perfectly. But these two random pull requests that just happen to be open as I'm recording this, these are not by builder engineers. This is code being submitted by the community. And so are a bunch of the issues that are listed. We welcome this. So please, if you have any interest, if this is interesting, welcome you to uh, our GitHub page and to make any contributions, any kind of complaints or suggestions, uh, just head on over there or to the Discord. All right, thanks so much for listening and hope to talk to you soon.
Ready for the live Q&A? Let's go.